G'day, this is Andrew Price, and in this quick Polygon tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create and set up a proper Polygon material in Blender 2.79. And the reason we're using 2.79 is that there is an awesome new shader included in it, which makes this whole process a whole lot easier. So let's get into it. Um, now, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating this on this material here, which is Wood Flooring 42, but you're welcome to use any material. Um, the reason I'm using this one is, for one, it's free. You don't even have to be a member. Um, but also, it's got the same sort of maps that most of our materials do. So the gloss, the normals, reflection, and all that stuff. So I'm going to be showing you where to actually put that in in Blender. But first of all, let's just very quickly delete everything. And I'm just going to drop down a plane right here. And I'll just put in a lamp above it just so that I can see what's on the plane. That's good. And I'll just make my world a black color, <laughs> a little bit dark. Cool. All right. So I'm going to split the view because what I'm going to put over here is the node editor, add a new material. And I might as well close this just so that we can focus on this. Okay, cool. So yeah, there's a new shader in 2.79 and it is called shift A, go down to shader, the principled BSDF. So if you've never seen this shader before, chances are this concerns you, <laughs> all these values here, a little bit worrying. Um, I've actually done a full video tutorial on this. Um, that explains what all of this does, why it's such an awesome shader. Uh, the link for that is in the YouTube description. But yeah, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to focus on the wood. All right. So this is it. So I've connected it up like I normally would, and you can see nothing's really changed. It's yeah, it's just a nice looking white, white plane. All right. So let's add an image texture. So shift A, texture, image texture. Now, the first, uh, when you look at all these textures here, the one that most people are familiar with, and the one where I guess which is probably the most important for a material, is the color map. Uh, sometimes called diffuse, sometimes called albedo. You might see it on Polygon sometimes as variation one or variation two. I mean, basically, they're all going to be used in the exact same way. And that is, when you open it, connect it to the base color input. Very, very simple. Um, now, you probably see this <laughs> if you've been following along, and that's because I haven't UV unwrapped the plane yet. So I go into edit mode, U, unwrap, and now voila. You can see it's now UV unwrapped. And yeah, okay, so far so good, but there's not really any interaction with the light. Like the light is just reflecting off it like it's made of uh, photo paper or something, right? Like it doesn't look like real wood. So we wanna give it some bumps. All right, so I'm going to add another image texture here. All right. Sorry if you can hear anybody laughing next door. I live in a, I work <laughs> in a little office block. Um, okay, so there are two different maps that you can use to get bumps in, um, yeah, in, in your 3D software. There's the displacement map and there is the normal map. And generally you would want one or the other. Some rare cases you would want to use two. But generally, the difference between them is that one, the displacement map is grayscale, um, but the normal map is, well, it's this weird purpley thing, but it actually uses three different colors, um, something to do with purple in there, but they control the X, the Y, and the Z um, axes, I believe. And so basically, theoretically, there is more detail in a normal map uh, than there would be in a standard black and white uh, bump map. Um, honestly, I haven't seen much of a difference myself. Um, yeah, like a normal map and a grayscale map, they're generally the same thing. Um, <laughs> the only reason we include both is that sometimes when you want to have uh, a ground displacement, like big rocks and things which jut up, where you would be using micro displacement um, and the adaptive subdiv, I'll do a full video on that later. But in those cases, you would want to use a displacement map. So we've provided both here for, you know, different people that want to use different things. But for most hard surfaces, architectural, you know, concrete, flooring, and in this case, wood, <laughs> we're just going to use the normal map. So let's go ahead and click open. And then we're going to connect this into the normal input. Now, when you do that, you'll notice that it doesn't really look as though it's worked, right? The bump 
is sort of there, but also the light moved for some odd reason. Like it doesn't seem to be working right. And that's correct. Um, and that is because for two reasons. One, whenever you're using an image texture that isn't directly contributing to the base color like this one is, you wanna make sure that the color space for the texture is non-color data. So that goes for all the rest of the maps that we're gonna be adding here. So non-color data. Uh, but now we've done that, the light still looks pretty weird. Um, and the reason for that is that you can't go directly from an image texture into a normal map input there, because you can see we're going from yellow in output to a purple input. So you need to have some sort of converter in between it. And in this case, it is a normal map node. So you click, drop that in, and there we go. And now this strength value here is the strength of the bump. So personal preference, whatever you want. There's no right or wrong value. Just have a look at it and uh, adjust it however you wish. Okay, so we've got bumps. The next thing looking at this, we might say, okay, we've got bumps, but the reflection looks pretty bland. Like no matter where you are looking at it, it just, it's the exact same reflection everywhere. Whereas a real floor would have different amounts of smudging and blurring, sticky spots and different things like that, um, which is really gonna help give some life to this material. So for that, I'm gonna add another image texture. Oops, texture image, open. And the one that I'm going to use is called gloss. It's sometimes also called roughness. So you might find maps that are, have a gloss map and other ones have a roughness map. They are identical, okay? They mean the same thing. The only difference is, is that one is an invert of the other, okay? So remember that. So gloss and roughness, they're the same, but they're inverted. So if I take this and I connect this to the roughness input over there, that is now having an effect on the reflection roughness. However, two things. First thing, just like before, I wanna make sure I'm using non-color data mode. But as well as that, I'm connecting a gloss input, uh, sorry, a gloss map into a roughness. Okay, now I mentioned they're the same thing, but if you're using a gloss map in a uh, software like Blender, which uses roughness instead, uh, because there's no convention like between softwares. Some software uses the term gloss, some software uses the term roughness. So if you're using if you're using a map which is different to what your software is looking for, all you need to do is invert it. Okay, and there we go. So now you can see it looks correct. A nice shiny looking wooden floor. And honestly, that is pretty much it for a basic material setup. Um, now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, what about that other map that was there? Okay, so there was, actually if I just duplicate this, let's just look at this. So for, for one, there was two displacement maps. Okay, they take up two. Um, they're the same thing. One of them is a TIFF file, which is a 16-bit file. So if you wanted to avoid like some artifacting issues that you can sometimes see, the 16-bit TIFF file is provided, but they're identical anyways. The only other map that we haven't mentioned is the reflection map. Now in our case right now with the principled shader, this reflection map is no longer needed. Okay, so I'll show you why. A reflection map looks like this. And what it's doing is it's telling the software which part of your material need to be reflective and which parts of it don't. Now, the only problem is, is that in the real world with a physically, you know, physical material, all materials have reflection. It's actually impossible for a completely diffused material to actually exist. So now you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute. Like, it's pretty clear when uh, an object isn't shiny, right? Like, okay. Um, I don't have my coffee cup, but this is a shiny object, right? Okay, everyone knows that, but what about paper? Okay, that paper isn't a shiny object. Well, actually it is. Um, it's just that the roughness is so high on the paper that you can't really uh, tell where the reflection is, uh, is coming from. So for example, if I just disconnected that and turned up the roughness, you would see that it looks just like the paper would. So a lot of materials that you think don't have reflection, they do, they are just at a uh, at a really high roughness. So yeah, basically this, this reflection map then, why is it included? Well, it's for people that are using a specular workflow, which you won't need to do now that you're using the principal shader, but it was, yeah, for the old days when you had to define which parts of 
the uh, material would have reflection and which parts would, but you don't need it anymore. So yeah, that's basically it. You only really need those three things. You need the base color, you need the gloss, which is gloss or roughness, and then you need some form of bump map, either in the form of displacement or a normal map like we have used here. The only other two maps that you might sometimes see for a material is one you might see an AO map, which is a mostly white, like a black and white map. I'll put a little image here to uh, show you what I mean, but it's like a black and white map. And uh, the way you would use that is you would want to combine it with your base color. So it would be a simple matter as like, let's pretend this is the AO image right here. You would take a mix RGB node and you would connect it like this. So multiply ignores the white values and only uses the dark values. So this would enable you to essentially add darkness to the crevices of your material. But again, it's not relevant in this case, so I'm deleting that. Um, and the only other one that you might see for some materials is a metalness map. So a metalness map looks like this, put the, an example there, but uh, it's telling them the, uh, it's telling Blender which parts of the material are dielectric, which is a non-metal, and which parts are metal, which is a metal, right? Um, and that is what this slider is right here, this metallic or, yeah, sorry, this metallic slider. So zero, it's set to dielectric, which is what this type of material is, a non-metal. If it's one, it's obviously treating it like a metal. So some specific materials will have a metalness map because it will have both. It will have both um, uh, like for example, like mud on a brushed steel. I don't know, let's just say that's, that exists, right? You would wanna have dielectric, non-metals, as well as metals. So then you would essentially take that map and just connect it like that. That's all you would need to do um, with the metalness input. And that's it, that's, uh, that's essentially it. So you don't need to worry about anything else. This specular value here, you're welcome to turn it down, but just like I said before, you don't need to because the 0.5 value, whoops, that's already there by default, that is what's gonna work for dielectric materials. You don't need to change it. You can if you want to, but you are going sort of out of the bounds of what is physically, physically possible, I suppose. Um, so there you go. What we're gonna do in the next video, in the next part, is I'm gonna show you how to add some surface imperfections like overlays. So we can add footprints, scratches, and other things to try and make this material look more worn. So go ahead and join me in that part.